Over the years, roller coasters have been depicted by movies and other forms of media as maniacal machines that injure and kill those who dare to step foot on one. And this just makes me sick to my stomach. Appalled, outraged, exasperated. I've made an entire video on how to get over your fear of roller coasters, but it seems that wasn't enough. No, I still get comments on that video all the time being like, well, co-students, I still don't trust that roller coasters are safe, so I'm not gonna ride them. This video is for those people to show them everything that happens behind the scenes to keep them safe and why they're not smarter than the engineers that design the rides. In today's video, I will show you the science, science behind the scream. <laughs> God damn it, that sounds like the freaking title to a National Geographic special or something. Anyways, I'm gonna get right into it because there is a lot that goes into the safety of these machines. Real quick though, if you're still not sold that these things are safe, your likelihood of dying on a roller coaster is one in 750 million. So here's a quick list of everything that you are more likely to die by. You're millions of more likely to go out from death by bathtub than on a roller coaster. With all that out of the way, let's get into the safety of these rides. Real quick, I do want to say that my condolences go out to victims of any of the various accidents, especially um, of the ones more recently from the drop tower in Florida. This video is in no way trying to play down those accidents or you know, trying to put a twist on those, a fun twist on those accidents. I know my tone in this video is, you know, kind of more upbeat and casual and sarcastic, but those accidents are terrible. And these roller coasters and the designers and the ride operators are at fault for those accidents. These roller coasters are not 100%. So obviously there will be accidents every once in a while. And there's nothing I can say to undo the past. My deepest condolences goes to the victims. And I make this video out of respect, not to play down any circumstances. Now this is going to be more of an educational flick. I'm going to get into all the different safety systems and procedures that keep you safe on these rides. Let's start with the most basic, the restraint. Now there are two types of restraints on rides. You got ratchet restraints, that's the one that goes and you got hydraulic. Ratchet restraints are fairly simple. There's a wheel and a pin and it clicks in like so. Since there's an edge on one side and flat on the other, the pin can't go back making it locked in. This is the older of the two but it's just as reliable. The only problem is it's a lot more restrictive because it can only be locked in predetermined positions. So you'll either have a lot of room and be bouncing around in a little cage restraint or you'll be choked to death. The other type is hydraulic restraints. These use hydraulic pressure, hence the name, to keep the restraint locked in place. Tubes of pressurized water are used with a piston to push the water through it and keep it there to lock it in place. It's a lot more complicated than I just made it out to be, but I'm a high schooler roller coaster YouTube nut, freaking Bill Nye the coaster guy. Both these are equally safe, but the hydraulic ones are more accommodating because they can be pushed to any positions. As for the type of restraint, they are all equally safe. I know there's going to be someone in the comments being like, well, actually, over-the-shoulder restraints are more safe because, like, shut the f*** up. Please, I, I beg of you, be quiet. None are safer than the others. The vest restraints, the over-the-shoulder restraints, and the lap bars have all been rigorously tested to make sure that they will keep you in. That's literally their one job. They will not fail at that. You may feel safer with an over-the-shoulder or vest, but that's, like, by design. Lap bars are meant to allow you to feel free. All these restraints use the same mechanisms that they use for tanks and airplanes to keep you locked in. I'm not even shitting you. You are as secure on a roller coaster as these airplane flaps are to a plane. Anyways, that's your crash course on roller coaster restraints. I have a full video on them though if you want to learn more. I'll link in the description or I'll put in the card or something. I don't know. It's, it's not hard to find. Time for the quiz. Number one, which is the safest type of restraint? If you chose D, none of the above, you are correct. Wow, you get a... You get nothing. Anyways, next, let's talk about another big one, block zones. Block zones are zones in the layout that prevent trains from bumping into one another. If you want a real deep dive into these things, then watch literally any El Toro Ryan video. This man literally gets off to them. But basically, they're sections of tracks that only one train can occupy at once. They're separated by something that can stop a train like a mid-course brake run or a launch or a final brake run. This is how coasters don't bump into each other for the most part. The only way that these fail is if a ride operator manually overrides the computer to tell a train to go into an occupied zone zone anyways. First of all, why does this option exist? When will a ride op, a 16 or 17 year old kid working a summer job know better than an intricate state of the art computer whose one job is to keep people safe? It just doesn't make any sense. I don't know why this is even an option. I don't know why ride ops are allowed to override the computer. Like when will that be functionable? I think functionable is a made up word. Functional? 
like useful i don't know you get what i mean again i'm not the block zone expert though that's el toro's ryan's ball game so if you want to hear more about these things which you know you they're pretty cool they're probably more complex than i can really make them out to be then you should watch some of his problematic coaster videos they're actually in like all of them quiz time actually no fuck this let's talk about evacs people freak out when they see lift hill evacs or mid ride block zone evacs but really this just means the ride safety systems are working it means the ride has recognized that something or anything even the slightest of things could possibly get in the way of functioning safely so it decided to shut itself down before anything can happen and you're really at no harm if you get evac on a lift hill it isn't going to roll back there are anti rollbacks set in place that work the same way as ratchet restraints one angled and one flat side so that it locks in place once it's gone over so you're not going to roll back and you're not going to fall out because there's stairs on both sides a lot of the time so you're really just walking down a big set of stairs with a nice view and then you should get free stuff at the end so it's not really a bad thing unless the ride stays closed for the rest of the day rides closed for all sorts of reasons it could be high winds heavy rain or strain not working a computer error whatever it may be the ride will shut itself down so that it can't run until the issue is solved these rides are meticulously programmed before opening to be as safe as possible if you think of it more as of a machine with a computer not just being strapped into this rampant minecart then it's a lot less scary and a lot more fun by it i mean a roller coaster a roller coaster is just a big machine with a computer at its core there are so many safety systems at play here that even i don't know about keeping these rides safe let me just run through a bunch of random safety nicks and trinkets on the ride that keep you safe. There are clearance tests for every tree, every support, every building on the ride so that even if you are literally like seven foot tall, you can put your arms up and you will be fine. In the station of inverted coasters where your legs are dangling, the floor will lower before the ride starts so that long legs don't drag on the way out and potentially get caught on something. Restraints will tighten throughout the ride, meaning you're more secure, not even by design, but simply because of the ride's g-forces. On the topic of restraints, a lot of the time restraints physically cannot be unlocked while on ride. They'll lock into place and need an electrical signal from the track in the station to actually unlock. Safety nets are scattered throughout major parks underneath major rides so that if a phone or shoe flies off, it'll land in the net and not on the person walking by. And lastly, there are hundreds, if not thousands of sensors on an average roller coaster detecting where the train is on the layout so that if something were to happen, ride ups know exactly where you are at all times. Let's talk about maintenance. Coasters are retracked, repainted, and revamped every three to five years, or steel coasters that is. But that number gets smaller the more popular the ride is or if it's wooden. Believe it or not, coasters have a shelf life like an expiration date on them when they're built so that if they reach that before the park wants it to retire then the ride will need a full recheck essentially building a replica of the same ride to keep it in service that's exactly what happened to the hulk in 2016 since it's so popular it reached its retirement age in less than 20 years but universal didn't want to get rid of it so they brought back b&m and bada bing bada boom new hulk was born this doesn't always happen though a lot of the times the park will just keep replacing parts until they have to scrap it entirely like with volcano but sometimes parks are willing to make the big investment if it really Really is an icon. Wooden coasters, however, are a whole nother animal. Basically, every off season they're going to need extensive care, and even during the operating season, they'll need some love. The Voyage at Holiday World undergoes extensive work every off season just to keep it in tip top shape. Wooden coasters get very rough very fast, which can lead to accidents like the El Toro derailment, so you got to be on top of them and keep them in their best shape. It's not common for full retracks like with steel coasters, but it has been done in the past. The only example I can think of was Colossus at Heidi Park, where it was closed for a couple of years and then completely retracted and then slightly themed like the Hulk was. But usually wooden coasters aren't as neglected as steel coasters are. They're usually kept an eye on so they don't deteriorate and need a full revamp. Colossus was just a special case of incompetence. Anyways, that's just gonna about wrap up this video. I mean, obviously that's not everything. It's barely scratching the surface, but it still is an overview of the major stuff keeping you safe. Restraints, maintenance, block zones, and what happens if something were to hypothetically go wrong. Remember, these rides are simulating death, so to avoid lawsuits, parks have to make them the safest machines on earth so they don't become what they're pretending to to be. Thanks so much for watching if you made it all the way through and if you did I will see you in the next one.